It's been a big week for Man United, sacking Eric Ten Hag and appointing a new exciting manager in Ruben Amorim. But as interim manager, Ruud van Nistelrooy remains unbeaten so far in his first two matches with Man United. However, their game against Chelsea did highlight some ongoing issues within the squad. And despite some exciting counter-attacking situations, their defensive shape left a lot of space for Chelsea to exploit, only to be let down by a lacklustre attacking output in the final third. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how Van Nistelrooy is leaning into counter-attacking tactics, how their defensive shape left a lot of space for Chelsea to exploit, and how Cole Palmer's free roll fits into Maresca's structured style. Let's take a look. Welcome to TalkSport, my name is Cormac from Football Meta, and if you enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Ten Hag may no longer be Man United's manager, but in last night's game against Chelsea, it was evident there are still a number of issues Ruben Amorim will need to work on as soon as he makes his way to Manchester. Chelsea, on the other hand, are having a decent start to the season, and Maresca has certainly given this team more of an identity than they have had in previous years. But their reliance on Cole Palmer might quickly become an issue, as even though they saw more of the ball last night against Man United, they struggled to test Onana on multiple occasions. And it was actually Man United that finished the game with a much higher expected goals. We're going to start this analysis by taking a look at Chelsea's offensive shape, as this is also what allowed Man United to be dangerous from counterattacks. As we've seen all season, Maresca's 4-2-3-1 will very quickly revert into a 3-2-5 shape, and he has a very interesting use of his fullback Malo Gusto when in possession. Whilst it's common to see fullbacks create a double pivot in the centre, Maresca wants his fullback to invert much further up the pitch, similar to how Postacoglu uses his fullbacks at Spurs. This means Malagusto and Cole Palmer will occupy these two positions in the half spaces. But so far this season, we've seen these two players shift position consistently. Against Liverpool, for example, Palmer started on the right with Gusto on the left. But in this match, Palmer was in the left inside channel, with Gusto on the right meaning Rhys James started as the left back. This shape allowed Chelsea to completely exploit Man United's 4-2-4 pressing system. And rather interestingly, while the front four was quite high on the pitch, the two holding midfielders were very close to the defensive line, leaving big gaps between the lines. Chelsea's idea in possession was to move the ball centrally, and with Palmer and Gusto moving slightly further out wide, it created big gaps in the middle that were then occupied by Jackson dropping deep. From this position, Chelsea had a number of options, at times playing direct balls into the wingers in Madueke or Neto, in a 1v1 against the fullbacks. But more consistently, Chelsea found a lot of control in the centre by playing straight through the centre and laying it off into Malo Gusto, who would then move it out wide into Madueke, before attacking the half space and looking to get the ball back across the box. This was a pattern Chelsea attempted a number of different times in this match, but were never able to get good delivery across the six yard box to Jackson or Palmer running across to meet it. Alternatively, this space in the center would also be occupied a number of times with the two holding midfielders in Lavia and Caicedo breaking past the pressing line themselves, or receiving the layoff from Jackson and attacking forward. This allowed Chelsea to get a lot of players forward on the defensive line, but again were not clinical enough in the final third. However, Chelsea's reliance on wanting to move the ball through the centre of the pitch did get them caught out on occasion. Specifically, Rhys James attempted very dangerous passes into Malo Gusto by cutting right through the heart of Man United's press. And while it did work on occasion, the moment Man United intercepted the pass, then Chelsea were completely outnumbered on the defensive line, and Man United could create a dangerous counterattack. In Maresca's system, the positions the players need to occupy are pretty specific and the rotations they need to complete are predetermined depending on where the ball is on the pitch. That is, except for Cole Palmer. And while his starting position in this match was in the left inside channel, he has the freedom to rotate and pick up whatever position he wants and that can help the team. And Chelsea are adapting to this free role in a very clever way. With Chelsea in their 3-2-5 shape, all the players are in their correct position. But when Cole Palmer would drift out of his starting position, then this would create a chain reaction of rotations around him. For example, if he moved over to the left, Neto would then drift inside to try and receive the ball. If Palmer dropped deep, then Jackson would move over with Caicedo pushing forward. These fluid movements from Palmer also make it much harder for the opposition to close him down. In the game against Liverpool, Palmer was a lot more fixed in his position and didn't get any time away from Jones who man-marked him for the entirety of the game. 
However, by moving away from his starting position consistently, in this match, if they attempted to man-mark him, it would leave big gaps that Chelsea could then exploit. And because of this, he was able to find plenty of space away from the press. By having this free role in a positional system, it does give Chelsea a more unpredictable edge. And it does mean that they can find the space to rotate a bit more freely. However, in this match, for all the impressive build-up patterns and rotations, they did lack a little bit of precision in the final third, and Man United were able to effectively defend against all these rotations. I personally felt De Ligt had an excellent game at stopping any movement in the right inside channel, be it through Cole Palmer or Pedro Neto when they entered the box. But whilst Chelsea's offensive shape allowed them to control possession, it also left them extremely exposed to counterattacks. Because Man United adopted a mid-block structure, as soon as the ball was played past the first pressing line, they still had a lot of players ready on the defensive line. And if Man United's defenders were able to regain possession, their first idea was to play the ball forward, where they were able to create a number of dangerous opportunities through Rashford or Garnacho. However, both of these players missed some big chances and weren't able to put Man United ahead. Now, counterattacks were an important part of Man United's game plan in this match, but they were also able to exploit a weakness in Chelsea's pressing shape. In this game, Chelsea wanted to press Man United man for man during the first phase of build-up, covering the four defenders and the two holding midfielders. The only position where they wanted the extra man was the 2v1 with Hoyland at the back. This ensured that any long balls through the centre could easily be closed down, and that the wingers never had space to receive the ball. But this simple act of creating a 2v1 against the striker meant Man United would often have a free player between the lines, and in this case Fernandes was able to receive the ball away from pressure. Because Chelsea would follow both Casemiro and Ogate, it meant a slightly deeper role from Fernandes created a 3v2 in the centre. The only way for Chelsea to cover this position was to have either Fofana break the defensive line and push forward, or to have Caicedo drop his man to cover. But a simple layoff would then find players like Ugarte in space to play it forward. This man advantage in the centre is what led to a big chance for Rashford right at the end of the first half, and also why Casemiro ended up with so much space to play it forward into Hoyland to get the penalty for Man United. In the second half, both teams looked to continue with the same tactical principles, and as the game opened up, it was Man United that had the bigger of the chances, again mostly coming from dangerous long balls and switches in play when the midfielders were able to find space away from the pressure. Whilst their lead only lasted for 4 minutes, with Fernandez's penalty being cancelled out by a phenomenal strike from Caicedo, huge chances fell for Garnacho on multiple occasions, leading to a lot of frustration at Old Trafford regarding his performance. But with only a few weeks left until Ruben Amarim takes over, what do you think is the most important thing he needs to fix in this system? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, my channel Football Meta is dedicated to breaking down the latest trends in football. So come check it out if you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest tactics. Thanks for watching.